Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connections Standalone. RAM Connections Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections. It can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. In this series of videos, we will be focusing our attention on the steel connection design workflow for designing gusset connections for a variety of different horizontal bracing situations, including horizontal column beam brace joints, horizontal beam beam brace joints, and horizontal X brace joints. Now, when creating your joint data for each of these types of joints, it will be important that you specify the appropriate beam column and brace sections along with your loading data. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application. And as you can see, I've already created several different types of joints within this model that will require a gusset connection. For this particular video, we're going to be focusing on our horizontal column beam brace joint, which I already have selected in the joint selection area. At this point in my workflow, I am ready to go ahead and assign a gusset connection to this joint. To start that process, go to the design tab in your ribbon toolbar and click on the assign button. In the connection assignment dialog, what you're gonna notice is that we've automatically filtered your connection choices to the type of joint you currently have selected. Here you can see that the HCBB or column beam brace joint has been selected and all of the options are available. For this type of connection, we have two different options that you can assign during the connection assignment process. You can go with the CA option, which basically means that we're going to assign some clip angles to connect the gusset to the web of your beam members or you can go with the DW option. This means that we're going to directly weld that gusset to the webs of your beam members. Let's go ahead and select the directly welded option and we will click the assign button. Here you can see that RAM connection has successfully assigned a gusset connection to this joint and we will finish this process by clicking close. Now the first thing I do after assigning a connection in RAM Connection Standalone is I take a look in the joint selection area. From this area, I can see the status of the connection design. Here I can see that the interaction ratio is greater than 1.0 and it is in red, which means that a satisfactory connection design was not achieved through the automated process. Now at this point, I can go ahead and choose to edit the connection or choose an alternate selection for connection design. For me, for this workflow, I'm gonna go ahead and see if the clip angle will get me a little closer to my goal. To reassign a connection, go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click on that assign icon again, and then you can change your connection design. Here, I'm gonna select the clip angle option, click on the assign button, click close to complete the process, and then again, take a look at that joint selection area. So it looks like for this particular joint, a clip angle was more successful in getting a passing connection design. Now at this point, if I'm satisfied with all the parameters that were assigned to this connection during that connection process, I can go ahead and just save my model and detail it accordingly. But for me, I'd like to take a closer look at some of those parameters. And to do that, we're gonna to go to the connection pad. To access the connection pad, go to the design tab in your ribbon toolbar, click on the edit icon, and then you can edit the appropriate connection. Here, we're gonna edit our gusset connection. This will bring up the connection pad where you can review all of the parameters that were assigned to your connection. And let's review some of the nomenclature over in the data area over at the left-hand side. What we're gonna notice is that several of the parameters have a little blue arrow adjacent to them. 
This indicates parameters that were specified either through the main model settings and configuration or through the joint data. Now you can modify these parameters within the connection pad, but you can't save them to the particular connection joint. And the reason for that is because they are defined somewhere else and we want to make sure that your modeling and design are consistent with each other. Any parameter that doesn't have a little blue arrow adjacent to it, you can go ahead and modify. And let's take a look at a couple of those parameters so we can see how we can customize our connection design. In the members area, I'm finding this parameter here. This is the gusset directly bolted to the members. Now this checkbox is unselected by default, but let's go ahead and see what happens when we go ahead and select that. That's an option where if you're detailing it this way, you go ahead and connect that gusset directly to the top flange of your beam members in this type of joint. So this is an option you have that's available to you in the connection pad. If you don't want it detailed that way, we can go ahead and unselect that option. Let's go ahead and scroll down a little further and we're going to find the interfaces area. Within this area, you can go ahead and customize a lot of your gusset information, including your gusset plate thickness and material properties. You can also customize your connection information, including any bolting or welding information that's available. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few of these areas. Here for the gusset area, you can see all the parameters that you can go ahead and customize. Some of these will affect the size of your gusset plate. If we scroll on down, we'll be able to see that you can also customize the interface for the gusset to the right beam connection, to the front beam connection, and also the gusset to your brace connection. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of those options here. Now here you can see because of the connection type we selected, the connector type is set to angles. At this point, we do have the option to change it to a directly welded connection if we would prefer. What we're going to notice is that did produce a warning for us and we know that because our interaction ratio is now in yellow. When you have a welded connection selected, you can go ahead and customize your beam weld electrodes, the size of your weld, and the length of your weld. If you want to switch back, we can select our angle option and we can specify all the information for the angle. So for the clip angle, we're going to bolt it to your beam side and then to your gusset itself, you have the option to select bolted or weld it. In addition to that, if we went to our gusset to our brace connection, we're going to see that automatically we are going to be bolting our gusset to our bracing member. And we have all of these options available here to customize. Now at this point, if you're happy with your connection design, you're ready to move on to your next step, which is to review your results. While I'm in the connection pad, I like to go to my results report. So let's go ahead and click on this icon. Here we're going to be able to see our steel connection results, and we're going to notice that new in RAM connection standalone, we have the ability to jump to different sections within our report through the contents window. I can go ahead and scroll on down through this report and I'd see all the geometric considerations and design checks that were performed. What I'm looking for is green check marks and green interaction ratios. If you see any interaction ratio greater than 1.0, that means that particular parameter failed and we'll be able to get the code reference that arrived at that solution. If any of your geometric considerations failed, we would see a red X here, and that is when you would get a warning. Now, if you'd like additional information regarding the calculations that were performed in the connection design process, we can go ahead and click on this view formulas icon. This will show you all your formulas and variables that were used to arrive at this solution. Let's go ahead and close out of this report. The last thing we're going to do is take a look at our DXF drawing. Now a DXF drawing would be available for each of your connections that you design in RAM connection standalone. 
these DXF drawings can be customized and exported as needed. If you made any changes to your connection design, you're going to go ahead and click on that save icon. And at this point, since my interaction ratio is less than 1.0 and it is in green, I don't have any errors or warnings, so I'm satisfied with my connection design. And I can go ahead and close out of the connection pad. At this point, this concludes my process for designing a horizontal column beam brace gusset connection within RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.